Variable aperture lenses, fixed aperture lenses. What does this mean? First, let's lay the groundwork. We're talking about zooms because we're talking about how aperture changes as you go from this to this. Everyone wants wide aperture on their lenses. Why? You can shoot in very low light with a wide aperture, and you have increased flexibility for creative depth of field effects. Fixed aperture means that if I am zoomed out and set the aperture to f2.8, and I zoom all the way in, we're still at f2.8. This is the most desired effect. In this case, with this lens, zooming does not change the apertures available to me. This means that the lens is bigger because it needs more light to be able to pull this off. Variable aperture means that with this lens, I start out at f3.5. But as I zoom in, I lose my widest available apertures all the way to the widest available aperture of f5.6 when I zoom all the way in like this. This is typical of smaller zooms that are lighter and less expensive to manufacture. Are these bad lenses? Not at all. But when you're shooting in low light, f5.6 can make things a bit more complicated. Okay, to our fixed aperture lenses, the advantages. On these, I can set exposure and the camera will be able to set the same exposure anywhere in the zoom range because aperture can be held constant as I zoom. Also, fixed aperture zooms tend to have relatively wide apertures, f2.8 for some and f4 for others, meaning that they are zooms that you can use in low light. A side benefit is that big glass like this tends to be the highest quality and in the most durable package. Variable aperture lenses have their perks, however, too. These tend to be less expensive than fixed aperture lenses while covering similar focal range. They are often lighter than fixed aperture lenses. For example, these two lenses, they cover the same focal lengths, but this little 18 to 55 is much lighter and easier to get around with. Of course, as I mentioned, narrower apertures you zoom in with this lens makes it a less effective tool in low light. And these little guys are often less durable than their fixed aperture counterparts. Also, in many cases, they're not as sharp as the bigger fixed aperture glass. Hey, if money were no object, we'd all have a bag full of fixed aperture lenses. But money is a big deal. So let's talk about what you can do if you would like to spend less for a variable aperture lens, but still want big results. One, set the widest aperture at the widest zoom setting. As you zoom in and out, the camera will give you the widest available aperture for the focal length meaning that the camera is helping you to maximize the light gathering capabilities that the lens does have. If you set at f5.6 while zoomed in, you'll only have f5.6 when you zoom out. But if you set f3.5 at the wide end, you'll zoom in and have f5.6, but then you'll have f3.5 when you zoom back out. Don't be afraid, especially with newer DSLRs, to increase the ISO sensitivity to get you that exposure that you need in low light. I'd rather increase the ISO than reduce the shutter speed, potentially subjecting my images to blur caused by camera shake or motion of the subject. Three, it can be more challenging to get the depth of field effects that you desire, but if you maximize the distance between the subject and the background, you can still achieve out of focus backgrounds, even at f5.6. Now that was just an overview. Let me know if you have any specific questions about these differences or any technique questions when working with either type of lens. In the meantime, I'll be out shooting, sometimes with this fixed aperture behemoth, but most of the time I have more fun with these smaller, lighter variable aperture lenses.